They get a maximum of one swing thought on the golf course, and it has to be something that provides them with confidence. I'm your Player Pursuits podcast host, Alex Shattuck, and my background is predominantly that as a player and as instructor. Of course, I do interviews, and we usually have a guest. Today, we do not. I want to talk about the improvement process, how to get better at golf. Now, today, we're going to focus primarily on the technical aspect. There are other parts of it. If we want to make this a series, we can go over course management, green reading, things like that to help you lower your scores. But today I want to talk about how to make a swing change, how to hit the ball better. All right. I trained as a player under Mike Bender for years. It's where I graduated high school at his academy. Um, So that is my predominant teaching background. But I want to talk about things that I've learned from other tour players, what Tiger Woods talks about in his interviews and kind of lay it out as a process for you. All right. So you want to get better at golf. Step one from a technical perspective is pick a philosophy. Time and time again, I see players trying to implement things from philosophies that don't match up. And maybe it's because they're scrolling on Instagram and they're seeing one thing that kind of makes sense on its own. Then they see another thing that kind of makes sense on its own, not knowing that those two components don't fit together. They don't match up. Um, And that matchup word gets tossed around a lot. Um, I talk about matchups through the golf ball to that produce a stable club face working through the zone, but that there are other matchups as well. So we can kind of ignore that word, but just understand that concepts don't always click together. A player of mine that goes and takes a lesson from George Gankis, well, they're not going to resonate those those things that we talk about are going to be different and the player will probably be confused. So what do you need to do? You need to go on to the social networks that I just belittled and find someone whose message resonates with you. Find someone whose information makes sense that you think has a philosophy that you can implement. That is above all priority number one. If you're trying to implement things from different places and you don't understand how the concepts fit together, you've already lost. You might as well not even be trying to make this change. All right. Now, step one, you've picked an instructor or a philosophy that you're going to follow. Next, you need to understand the concepts you are looking to implement inside and out. You cannot just say, I'm trying to get rid of my early extension. I'm trying to get rid of my flip. Something like that, that's not good enough. You need to know why it's happening and what specifically you need to do from the cause perspective to clean up those effects. That's what those things are. Your early extension, your flip, right? Any number of those pieces, your chicken wing, oh my God, right? Those are compensations being made so that you can just make contact with the golf ball and try to keep the club face square, all right? But unbeknownst to you, that early extension or that early release, that chicken wing is needed for you because you have a steep shaft in transition. It's your compensation. Otherwise, you'd miss the golf ball. That club face is maybe so open, and that early release is the only way that you've ever known how to square up that face. Maybe you have a poor pressure shift. Maybe you don't rotate well through it. Or maybe you don't even create enough angles in your backswing to maintain down into the hitting zone. Okay, You need to understand which cause is hurting you. So we have an opportunity to fix it. That is generally where an instructor who teaches the philosophy you're looking to implement comes in. And ideally, they prepare for you the perfect game plan. You're steep in transition because you have an inside takeaway and or you lack depth, whatever it may be. They'll prescribe you drills that'll provide you with the proper feel. So that way we have a chance to build the foundation. Step one, understanding the concepts, okay? You need to know this inside and out, be able to explain it to someone else, right? For myself, 
I would say my tendency is to get too deep, long and across the line, steep in transition. I spin out and then I get stuck and flip it. Okay, so what do I need to do? I need to work on taking the club back further outside, keeping it on plane so I can take it back more vertical, maintain more stability at the top, be more on plane so I can make my beeline to the golf ball, see that shaft shallow without getting stuck. Right? I have a specific game plan that I'm working on to address that. You need to have your own. Second step, execute in a practice swing. This starts with your drill reps. I work with all my players, make sure that they're practicing perfectly. I would rather see them send in videos of them doing drills or doing rehearsals than even see the full swing after we make a change. Because I know that if we're implementing something properly in our practice, it will bleed into the full swing when it's ready, no sooner, no later. All right, start as slow as it takes to make a good rep. This is a new motor pattern. Of course, we can take existing elements from our old one, but ultimately this is a new pattern and it's gonna start off weak. We need to train it by starting slow and building up. Only when you can execute a perfect practice swing do I remotely expect you to be able to take it to the range. Right? I need a perfect practice swing before I can expect to put the golf ball there and hit it. That golf ball does crazy things to our brain. Adds tension. We get nervous. We try to hit it really hard. All right? When that happens, you're going to fall back into your old pattern. It's normal. If you can do your drills, whatever you're working on, working with feedback, putting a physical obstacle in the way, or using a mirror, or using a camera to confirm that you're actually making the change you think you're making, we can do that while hitting a golf ball. Do it. First time you try to hit a golf ball with a change where you try to feel it, two things are probably going to happen if you go full speed. Number one, you're probably going to hit it poorly. And number two, you're going to look at the video or look at your mirror or whatever and find out you didn't even make the change you thought you were making because feel is not real. All right, what I describe in a sensation is oftentimes not even what's happening. To this day, when I think I'm taking it back on plane, it's way inside. Not that you have to take it back perfectly on plane, but you catch the drift. To my, for myself, I need to feel like I'm taking it back way outside. I look on camera, it's perfect. Okay, so maybe I put a cone there or a noodle there when I start hitting golf balls so that I know immediately whether I did it right or wrong. Okay, so we're going to use feedback while we hit golf balls so we know we're actually making the proper move. And that's going to take time to be able to execute it on the range. Sometimes I'll give a lesson and the player will say, I'm going to go try to implement this on the golf course tomorrow. No, <laughs> it's never helped anybody. I let players know they get a maximum of one swing thought on the golf course. And it has to be something that provides them with confidence. <laughs> All right, as much confidence as possible. Whether it's a technical thought, it probably won't be, to be honest. Think back to the last time you played your best golf or a round that you really remember, the special to you, think about what you were thinking during that round. Maybe it was, well, I, just, I was really trying to stay smooth. Or I was just thinking, get to your lead side. Or something like that. Write down those feelings when you have them. That way you know you have something to go back to, something you can kind of meditate with over the golf ball, quiet the brain, get comfortable over this shot. I want to stay loose and confident. If you're trying to implement three or four swing thoughts, you've probably already lost. You might hit one or two good shots, but it's just a roll of the dice. I'm sorry. The game of golf. It's both challenging and rewarding, requiring focus, concentration, and the ability to tune out outside distractions. Peak performance is achieved through a synergy of body and mind. Shell Golf Apparel is designed with advanced textile technology that moves with you with four-way stretch and moisture-wicking properties that keep you cool and dry. Visit shell.shop today and get 40% off the entire golf collection using promo code PLAYERPURSUITS. Now, back to the podcast with your host, Alex Shattuck. 
All right, when you get on the golf course, which of course is step four, right? So just to review, number one, do we understand the concepts? I would argue that most players get lost there. Players that get good instruction, players that um, pay attention to what they're doing, maybe they have that one down. Step two, execute in a practice swing. I need to know that I can make this move in the first place. Number three, take it to the range. Only when I can implement on the range at a high clip and, and see the ball doing what I want it to do, only then do I expect to be able to maybe take it to the golf course. This is a process. It takes time. Tiger described almost the exact same concepts. Right? What you're hearing today is, is inspired by what I've heard tour pros talk about, what um, I tell my players all the time, and what my mentor, Mike Bender, and I had a conversation about a couple weeks ago. I said, I need to put this on wax. All right, when I can execute at a high clip on the range with the ball flight I'm looking for, where it looks great on camera, then I'm going to try to take it to the golf course. All right, that next level of pressure of this shot matters, this shot has consequences, I need to play from wherever this ball ends up, that's probably going to bring a level of tension that is going to keep you in whatever pattern is most comfortable or natural for your brain. And I'd rather have you comfortable with a poor pattern than uncomfortable with a new one. That's why we wait this long. Okay. Only when your new pattern that you've worked on and you understand the change for, only after that becomes second nature do I expect to be able to take it to the golf course. The extreme version of that is that if I feel really, really good with it on the golf course, then I can expect it to start showing up in tournaments. How can we ease that transition? Well, from step one all the way to step five, step one, I'm going to understand the concept. Step two, I'm going to execute in a practice swing. Step three, I'm going to use feedback when I'm hitting golf balls to make sure I'm doing what I think I'm doing. Step four, I'm going to take it to the golf course. And we're going to take it from the range to the course to competition by having a high level pre-shot routine. Something that we do every single time that relaxes us. Right, when I was coaching um, college golf, I found that the better players had pre-shot routines. I found that those pre-shot routines were more consistent. Right, so it, yours does not have to be the exact same as myself, but myself is I have a stand, but I've already done my shot selection, I've already made my practice swings, all that good stuff, right? I'm going to stand behind the golf ball. I'm going to walk into it really aggressively because my tendency is to be too passive. I, I get, almost get a little scared of it, right? So my I have to work on walking in very aggressively so I can kind of ramp up my confidence level, ramp up my I'm going to be an athlete about this mentality. All right. Step into the golf ball. I have kind of a procedure for doing that, but we can go over that. All right. I'm going to put the club behind the ball, my right hand. I'm looking at the target. I'm going to put the left hand on the club. And I immediately go into my waggles. I got three waggles. I'm going to take it back on plane. I'm looking at the target. Right? As soon as that club gets back to the golf ball, I'm going to look down at the golf ball and I'm firing. Right? And I can match this down to a metronome, whatever. PGA Tour average metronome, 50 beats per minute. And that's from the takeaway to impact, not to the top or anything like that. Right? You can get crazy if you want to with that, some tempo and motion stuff. All right, but I know that my pre-shot routine takes 12 and a half seconds every time. And that's the kind of level of consistency that really allows us to take concepts through these places, right? If I can execute that pre-shot routine on the range, that's going to make it much more likely that I can execute on the golf course. When I can execute on the golf course with that pre-shot routine, that's going to make it much more likely for myself to take it to the competition. Most players give up at step one or two, right? Or maybe if they understand the concept, then they try to implement it on the golf course. And again, like I said, I guarantee you two things. That swing didn't look any different than your normal swing because if you're going to, and we'll talk exaggeration, but if you're going to 
take a concept and try to implement it, you probably need to move a mile to actually move an inch or feel like you're moving a mile to move an inch. Right? So your golf swing is going to look exactly the same if you try to skip steps and you're going to hit it worse. Because now you're thinking about all this stuff and you're not in a comfortable pattern. Let the swing change come to you by going through those steps. All right. Now, how do we break an old pattern or how do we make progress happen faster when we're in kind of steps two or three? And I would say exaggeration. If I take a rubber band and I stretch it out and I let go, it's going to revert back to the size that it was before. If I do that a bunch of times, well, maybe it gets a little bit looser. But if I actually want to change the shape of that rubber band, I need to stretch that rubber band out as much as I can. Same concept. If I have an inside takeaway, I'm going to rehearse taking it back outside as much as possible. I'm kind of trying to shock my system, demonstrate it to it a whole new pattern. And exactly what I'm doing, it's going to start to feel more normal to find that middle ground. All right, and that is exactly what we are trying to do. Now, something that Mike really instilled in me is that there are different types of feedback when we're on the range. I saw this just today in a lesson. A player was implementing a concept with feedback, doing everything right on the range. But as he was doing it, the club face was just wide open. It was a new position. He didn't know how to square it from there yet. It was, it was a much better position. He was slotting the club beautifully. He was starting to match it up through the shot. It was awesome. Every shot was consistent. They were just consistently right as a right-handed player. All right? And he instinctually felt uncomfortable, didn't like the results, wanted to go back to his old pattern. The only thing that matters while making a change is what it looks like on video. I guarantee you, once it's fully implemented and the proper matchup is understood and then implemented, I guarantee you, you'll hit it better. What was the point in making the change in the first place? Was to hit it better. Building a more efficient golf swing, kind of physics 101, we can do that. But it's going to take some time and trust. Okay, so the only thing that matters at first is what it looks like on video, not what the ball flight looks like, not how it feels like. Honestly, if it feels natural to you, you're probably not doing it right. When you take a lesson, you're actually, in a sense, investing or paying to be uncomfortable because whatever change they're going to implement with you is going to feel uncomfortable, or it should. Otherwise, it's probably not radical enough or new enough to actually make any difference. Okay, so I don't care while you're making the change what it feels like or what the ball flight's doing. I care about the motor pattern. Once it's implemented and we build on it, right? The golf swing builds right on top of itself. It's nothing more than cause and effect. If we can improve, for example, your transition, putting you in a better slot to hit the golf ball, once you learn how to square the face up from that better spot, all of a sudden you're going to hit it better. So this player today wanted to revert back to his old thing. At least he could kind of see the ball go near the target line. But he stuck it out. He learned. We worked on how to square it up, how to release it without flipping it. And all of a sudden he was hitting his wedges perfectly. The TrackMan numbers were spot on all the way through the board. Right? He lowered his launch. He hit a shot. I think he expected it to go 60 and it went 80 because impact was so much better. All right? All of a sudden, the balls that were 15 yards right were starting five feet right and drawing to the target line. And just an example, this player got it perfectly implemented, you know, with these wedges. And I left him with a game plan to take it through the bag. He needed to work on the same things, but those longer irons, we swing them faster. They get a little bit more uncomfortable over them. 
it wasn't implemented ASAP. That doesn't mean it's not worthwhile to put in the work and make it happen. But the fact that we got the wedges was, you know, kind of a boom to confidence. And that was kind of the win for the day. All right. So when I talk about um, kind of making sure that you're making the change, you have a few options. You can pay a lot of money and have your instructor or whoever is guiding you through this process, whoever's the set of eyes on you, you can pay a lot of money and have them there every time you practice. Or you can ask the instructor for a specific game plan with feedback. Right? And they should be able to provide it to you so that way you can practice on your own. I want my players to be autonomous. I just had a great podcast recently with Parker McLaughlin, short game chef, works with lots of tour players. He says, yeah, I work with most of my players like once a quarter. And I think that someone who's putting together a high-level game plan for you should be able to provide you um, with a recipe, no pun intended, short game chef, um, to accomplish that, to do something similar. Okay, so all I really want to do today, it's a pretty short podcast, was lay out that game plan so that you can ask yourself, what stage am I? And if you can't answer that question, you probably aren't even to stage one yet. All right. Thank you so much for kind of listening to my spiel. Hopefully it helps uh, somebody out there find where they are on their journey of making a swing enhancement. And they have an ability now to understand what they need to do next. All right. Stick around. Um, I think over the next few weeks, we're going to have some great guests get through, dive into some topics. If you ever want to hear anything specific or hear a specific guest, you can DM either the Player Pursuits handle on social media or myself, Alex Shattuck Golf, on Instagram, TikTok, whatever. Let me know what you want to see, what you want to hear, what questions you got, a review. We'll get to it. Maybe address it on the show. Thank you so much.